I, as it turns out, actually, I have a lot more lenses than I thought I did. I, um, I own a lot of camera lenses. I, at last count, they all aren't here. A friend of mine actually has a few of them. Uh, I have 40 lenses for my cameras. And these are lenses for um, mental 4x5. This is for my Leica. Uh, for, and also, actually, ones that I use on a regular basis with my Nikons. And um, I just, I love different lenses. I mean, I love wide lenses. I love long lenses. I love just, you know, shutting shooting all kinds of new you know, things. You know, it's always kind of fun to throw something obscure on the camera and go walk about and take some photos. And, uh, but I'm not here to talk about lenses. I'm here to talk about a lens. And that lens is, well, it's an interesting story, actually. I was going to travel to Cuba with my dad in 2012. I really, I had a lot of trouble. I was struggling with what to bring because I didn't really want to bring a big SLR and I didn't really want to bring a whole bunch of lenses uh, because it was going to be heavy and I was going to stick out even more than I already did. And I was talking to a friend of mine about this over coffee and he actually said to me, he, he challenged me, he said, I challenge you to take one camera and one lens. And I immediately just said, forget it, that's crazy. And then I thought about it and I thought, well, you know, maybe I could bring a zoom. And he said, nope. He said, I challenge you to take single focal length. So that complicated things somewhat. So at any rate though, I was kind of intrigued. And so I started looking around and I, you know, he was right. Uh, you know, taking one camera, one lens was, was absolutely the, the right thing to do. And I ended up actually taking an X100 with uh, the 23 millimeter F2 lens, the Fuji, Fuji film camera. And uh, it absolutely transformed my travel experience. Uh, I can't tell you how amazing it was to be able to uh, be freed from the whole concept of just trying to decide what to bring and whether or not you should really take that wide angle or that telephoto or any of that kind of stuff. It was just, you know, it was simple. You know, I just grabbed the camera and on we went. So it was, it was actually, it was a really, a really cool experience. So why do this? I mean, I can only speak to my own experience, but here's a few reasons. Uh, one of which is because you can. And uh, George Mallory was famously quoted in the New York Times when asked about climbing Mount Everest, uh, why he did it, and his response was, because it's there. N not, that, not that I'm doing anything as crazy as climbing Everest, but uh, it's, it's actually it just, just the simple, you know, the exercise of just a single camera and a single lens really, you know, it, it really you know, gets to the fundamentals of photography. And it really creates an excellent opportunity to not really worry about the equipment at all for any reason. Um, another reason, which photographers insist on, you know, this is never the case, but everyone who travels with a photographer insists that it is the case, uh, is that your traveling companions won't kill you. Now, my father is one of the most patient people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing, but I'm fairly confident that if I was fiddling with lenses and trying this and trying that and one of these and some of those and whether or not I should bring this or that, um, he probably would have killed me. And, um, and I, you know, really, I can't blame them. But having a single lens and a single camera, you know, all of those conversations about whether or not it's the right lens, they all just disappear. I didn't have to worry about uh, my carry-on bag because it was a backpack with a camera, and that was it. You know, a few, ba a few batteries. Fuji's chew-through batteries, so had a few of those. Had some SD cards, had a couple of lens wipes to clean the lens and the sensor, and um, uh, I enjoyed the process of shooting in Cuba with one camera and one lens so much that when I went to Russia a few months ago, I brought one camera and one lens. It was as much fun the second time as it was the first time. The nature of shooting with one camera and one lens is you actually create a, a visual narrative that's rather strong because of course everything's shot exactly the same with exactly the same equipment. I found that it took a while to get used to it. To get into the rhythm of shooting with it, I really struggled to frame things the way I wanted to frame them. Once things started to click, it was really nice to be able to put together a whole series of images that all have a really a, a wonderfully cohesive feel, partly because you know it was me shooting them and partly because well, only one lens. But there are some drawbacks, one of which is that if you have a wide angle that you can't quite cover, especially if you want to shoot a panoramic from some view or something like that, only having a 35mm lens doesn't really lend itself particularly well to capturing that. A couple of times I did end up cursing the fact that I didn't have a wider lens, but then of course I also embraced the fact that, that you can uh, do photo merge in Photoshop or uh, pan you know, with your camera, take a few frames and stitch them together. And so that wasn't too much of an issue. I mean, more of an issue was actually trying to capture details, you know, as if it were a, uh, a telephoto. You know, there were a few things that I missed because I didn't have something a little longer. 
But then that was, you know, it was part of the deal. And uh, there wasn't really too much that you could do about it except to, to just kind of run with it. When I went to Russia, um, I had unfortunately sold my X100, which I actually, you know, it's funny. I don't really lament selling very many cameras. Um, I, well, obviously, I don't really sell very many cameras. I keep them all. But the ones that I have sold, um, the one that I really, really miss the most is the X100. Going to Russia, I took an X-Pro2 and a 35.4, which actually wasn't as good of a camera from shooting travel than the X100 is. And I actually think I'll probably end up getting myself an X100F or something like that next time I do one of these trips, just to, uh, just to get back to that, that super compact feel, because it, it, made, it made a big difference. Um, and besides, you can get cool leather cases for it, which is kind of fun as well. So, um, so here's, here's, here's the challenge, such as it is. Um, if you are going traveling, and if you're taking any time trying to figure out whether or not you should take more than one lens, I challenge you to just take one, whichever one it is, and run with it. And I think you'll be amazed. Capitolio, uh, shot with the X100 in Cuba. This is the Capitol building in downtown Havana. Um, the reason why I, my frame was so high, yeah, this actually happened a lot when I was traveling, is there was so much, there's actually a whole bunch of construction going on in the foreground, and so I had to crop out all the scaffolding. Um, so that's why I ended up there. This shot here with the red car in front of the blue building, this is in Trinidad in Cuba. That was just a total grab shot. Uh, the 19, is it a Chevy? I think it's a 54 Chevy. We were in the back of a cab, um, and that was just too much fun. This, wow, this was something, this is really nice when you only have one camera and one lens and it's all around your neck ready to go. It was a total driving rainstorm and I got this shot just looking down an alleyway with a woman with her umbrella. This is a, a Studebaker and I just, I saw this on the street on the Prado in, uh, in Havana, right in front of the big hotel. Uh, this is from Russia. These are the soldiers goose-stepping at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in the Kremlin. These guys were absolutely in perfect step. Here's a shot that, that may well have looked better with a longer lens. This is uh, one of the towers of the Kremlin. I, I think I probably would have cropped it a bit tighter if I had, had the opportunity. Now, okay, now this is the, the prison in Cuba. And this is a Panopticon prison. This is the dining hall. Uh, in case you're wondering, those were all tables and the wood, I guess, is long gone. It, it was, I think it would have worked better if it was a bit wider. This is the ultimate reason why you have a camera on your neck when you're not doing much, is that you can, you can just get a grab shot. And, and I was just crossing the street in front of this car and I uh, just whipped up my camera and took a shot. Uh, this is the Museum of the Cosmonaut in Moscow. It was just too easy to get the shot and that was just, I mean, that's just the perfect 35 shot. This is one of the old Soviet era subway cars in, in Russia. And in this case, the, the guy on the left who's sitting there, I, you know, I, I would have liked him not to be there. I suppose I could retouch him out, but that sort of defeats the purpose. Here's another reason why you'd want something wider. This is the Catherine Palace from Pushkin and that's like one third of it. And also the clouds in the background were really, really dramatic and it would have been nice to have captured a bit more on the right. Here's another shot of that prison in Cuba, a different cell block. And it would have been nice to have been a bit wider, but I was still very happy with how it worked out. Uh, there's the prison with the 35. They designed it specifically so that I could get a, a shot um, from this point, obviously, because it fits in perfectly. You know, some nice street shot, pigeons. We've got uh, Lenin from behind in St. Petersburg. And this was another one of those shots that you can, you can only get when you have a camera on your neck. I love this, just this woman, red coat. It was just so nice to be able to get.